In this example, we'll factor the same set of expressions as we did in examples 1 and 2, but this time we'll use shortcuts. In part A, we'll factor 9x squared minus 16. This looks like a difference of squares, but we should verify that it actually is. The first term is a perfect square since 9x squared is 3x squared. The last term is a perfect square since 16 is 4 squared. There is no middle term and a minus separates the first and last terms. This is a difference of squares, so we can use the difference of squares shortcut. In step 1, we'll write two sets of brackets. In step 2, we'll square root the first term and put it first in each set of brackets. The square root of 9x squared is 3x, and its position is shown in the animation. In step 3, we'll square root the last term and put it last in each of the brackets. The square root of 16 is 4, and its position is shown in the animation. In step 4, we need opposite signs in the brackets, 1 minus and 1 plus. Once we put in the correct signs, we're done. The factors are 3x minus 4 and 3x plus 4. In part b, we'll factor 16 minus 9x squared. This looks like a difference of squares, but we should verify that it is. The first term is a perfect square since 16 is 4 squared. The last term is a perfect square since 9x squared is 3x squared. There is no middle term, and a minus separates the first and last terms. This is the difference of squares, so we can use the difference of squares shortcut. In step 1, we will write two sets of brackets. In step 2, we'll square root the first term and put it first in each set of brackets. The square root of 16 is 4, and its position is shown in the animation. In step 3, we'll square root the last term and put it last in each of the brackets. The square root of 9x squared is 3x, and its position is shown in the animation. In step 4, we need opposite signs in the brackets, 1 minus and 1 plus. Once we put in the correct signs, we're done. The factors are 4 minus 3x and 4 plus 3x. In part c, we'll factor 16x squared plus 24x plus 9. We should check if this is a perfect square trinomial. The first term is a perfect square. 16x squared is the same as 4x squared. The last term is a perfect square. 9 is the same as 3 squared. The product of the square roots of the first and last terms is 12x. The middle term, 24x, is double 12x.
this is a perfect square trinomial. In step one, we'll write one set of brackets. In step two, we'll square root the first term and place it first within the brackets. The square root of 16x squared is 4x, and the animation shows how it is positioned. In step 3, we'll square root the last term and place it last within the brackets. The square root of 9 is 3, and it's positioned as shown in the animation. In step 4, we copy the sign of the middle term. Copy the plus sign as shown in the animation. In step 5, we'll square the brackets. The final answer is 4x plus 3 squared. In part D, we'll factor 1 minus 16x plus 64x squared. Check if this is a perfect square trinomial. The first term is a perfect square, since 1 is 1 squared. The last term is a perfect square. 64x squared is the same as 8x squared. The product of the square roots of the first and last terms is 8x. The absolute value of the middle term, 16x, is double the product of the square roots of the first and last terms. 16x is double 8x. This is a perfect square trinomial. In step 1, we'll write one set of brackets. In step 2, we'll square root the first term and place it first within the brackets. The square root of 1 is 1, and it's positioned as shown. In step 3, we'll square root the last term and place it last within the brackets. The square root of 64x squared is 8x, and is positioned as shown in the animation. In step 4, we'll copy the sign of the middle term. Copy the sign as shown in the animation. In step 5, we'll square the brackets. The final answer is 1 minus 8x squared.